The Bible commands us in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 to give a reasonable defense of our faith. This episode will answer questions on how organisms develop defensive and offensive features. The creation was described as very good, and that every creature, including humans, had a non-carnivorous diet. In the biblical record, there was no human or animal death prior to the fall. Here is a beautiful quote from the book called Steps to Christ that is descriptive of the earth that was created from God's hand. It says, God made man perfectly holy and happy, and the fair earth, as it came from the Creator's hand, bore no blight of decay or shadow of the curse. It is transgression of God's law, the law of love, that has brought woe and death. In the young earth creationist model, both humans and animals ate only a plant-based diet in the Edenic paradise. However, this raises the question, why do animals eat flesh today? Keep watching to see the correct answer. The Hebrew phrase nefesh kaya means living creature or living soul. Animals are referred to as living creatures in Genesis chapter 1, verses 20, 21, and 24. Humans are referred to as living souls in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. However, plants are never referred to as nefeshkaya, and thus plant death is not death, biblically speaking. For instance, eating fruit from a fruit tree does not take the life of the fruit tree. Thus, the consumption of plants does not bring about death, biblically speaking. The Bible clearly states that the life, or the nephesh, of the flesh is in the blood. Therefore, unicellular organisms like bacteria would not really fall under the nephesh kaya definition of life, as they do not have blood. Although, there are bacteria that God created to have a symbiotic relation, or a mutually beneficial relationship, with his other organisms and creatures, like us. The Bible teaches that the creation will be restored. In Acts chapter 3, verse 21, the Bible says, Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. The Bible also says in Isaiah chapter 11 that lambs, wolves, calves, lions, bears, children will all exist in the peaceful bliss of the earth restored. There are three primary explanations for how animals acquired defensive and offensive structures or features. The first explanation is called the degeneration explanation, the second, the alternative function explanation, and finally, the sin-initiated fallen necessity explanation. The first explanation, or the degeneration explanation, postulates that the defensive or attack structures now present in animals are simply the result of mutational buildup or genetic entropy over time. In other words, these defensive attack structures may have originally had a good function prior to the fall, 
but have since degenerated because of the fall. For instance, viruses may have served a purpose in the pre-fall world. Viruses could have helped serve to foster genetic diversity by transferring genetic information between organisms. Now, viruses could have experienced a loss of information to make their enzymes less specific, which in turn caused them to foster disease instead of diversity. The second explanation, or the alternative function explanation, postulates that the harmful structures that exist in animals today performed harmless and even beneficial tasks prior to the fall. Take for instance the sharp teeth found in organisms today. Could this feature have existed in a pre-fall world? Yes, sharp teeth could have, but they were not utilized to inflict wounds or to kill other creatures. Consider the sharp teeth found on fruit bats. Another thing, our immune system was more than likely part of God's original design. Now, our immune system's primary function is to fight off pathogens and other kinds of foreign contaminants. However, in the pre-fall world, the immune system more than likely functioned simply to maintain the bodily integrity of Adam and Eve, meaning it would serve to distinguish or provide a sense of awareness between self and non-self. The third explanation, or the sin-initiated explanation, is that due to the fall of Adam and Eve, the earth was now redesigned by God to suit their fallen condition. Consider the following biological changes that God imposed as a consequence for the fall of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were now subject to physical death. Childbirth is now a painful process, and thorns and thistles are now present on plants. Furthermore, being that the serpent was the medium through which Satan communicated, it was now redesigned as a curse. Lastly, the Bible indicates that all of creation on this earth was affected by the fall, whether by simply being left to degenerate, or by having to be redesigned to suit the fallen condition of Adam and Eve. No, God's command was to fill the earth, not to overpopulate it. However, it can be inferred that once the commandment was fulfilled, the filling of the earth would cease. Perhaps God would have even made another world for the inhabitants. Either way, the fact of the matter is that death has reigned all the way from Adam's time. Nonetheless, there are examples of carnivorous animals that exist today that only eat vegetables, like Florence the shark, Dante the British Cat, Leah and Little Tyke the Lionesses, and the Bagheeri Kiplingi Spider. They are all carnivorous animals that refuse to eat meat. They all eat a vegetarian diet. The Bible says, For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Here we find that Christ steps in and passes over the ground where Adam fell, enduring every test in man's behalf. He redeems Adam's disgraceful failure and fall by coming forth from the trial untarnished. This places man on vantage ground with God. It places him where, through accepting Christ as his savior, he becomes a partaker of the divine nature. Thus, he becomes connected with God and Christ. I pray that you enjoyed this episode of Genesis Under a Microscope, and that you will subscribe to Christ Jesus Ministries' YouTube channel. For more faith-building content, continue to watch the rest of the episodes in this series. For a free download of the book Steps to Christ, please see the description where you will also find a study guide on this video's topic. Take note of the fact that although we live in a fallen world, we have a God who perfectly loves us. And remember, the truth saves.